kind of policies in place already because it's going to have a much higher volume you just have a much lower latency requirement than the board because it can allow you to understand what the customer is doing in the moment and then tailor your communications accordingly we'll talk about the difference that this can make identifying that customer here's a quick look at what we're talking about when we're mentioning modern creative to- review so if you want to be able to facilitate all the contact types that Lisa just reviewed with you, you need something like this with data that looks at social and sentimental environments, with aligning it with online behavior and contact history. By creating and maintaining this comprehensive 360 degree review is something that many business, not just marketing, but they struggle with today. And this is clearly an example of why the customer experience and data management partnership is so vital. Because technical expertise traditionally exceed the expertise of marketers, hence that's why the partnership between data management and customer experience is important because doing this is what data management is designed to do. So let's explore how does customer experience and data management become blood brothers. A good place to start with data is what is data management to your organization? I find that having a common vocabulary that everyone inside of the organization understands and use will break down many walls. Here are some definitions of data management for your consideration. The important thing to remember is that data management is more than just a tool. It's a community effort that is supported by tools. If you don't align people and process first, then the technology will not solve your customer data challenges. There are four key data management capabilities needed for successful customer experience initiatives. The data management practitioners on our call will be familiar with these capabilities. So we're going to talk about how these cap- what, talk about these capabilities from a marketer's perspective. There are lots of situations where marketers need data in real time for decisioning. They need ways to take customer data entering the organization and quickly aligning it with other data that resides inside the organization on the fly so they can make decisioning processes on the fly. For example, they might want to take credit or analytical scores, apply it to a customer while this customer is in store, in, on the web, or talking to a customer care agent. So marketers need to have the ability to access customer data and connect it to, to real-time data for accurate, timely, and relevant decisions. Marketers also need a way to access data residing in production systems in a timelier manner without impacting the performance of the production environment. Long gone are the days when marketers could wait for long ETL processes to happen overnight. They need the data as soon as it's available. Many companies are solving this issue by virtualized data data into a cached environment where that information can be cleansed according to your governance rules and analytics applied to the cached data for decisioning functions. This benefits the marketers because they can get more timely access to data without impacting the production system, which, by the way, makes your IT group happy. Customer data should be protected and secured, thus ensuring those who have access to this information have access and those who don't, don't. Customer data should be encrypted to ensure the protection and security of the sensitive information. This is important for regulatory requirements and corporate goodwill. Data governance provides the mechanism to set your security and access policies for sensitive data. Data management tools set provide capabilities to encrypt, track, monitor, and report on sensitive data inside of your organization based on the policies set forth in your data governance program. As more organizations desire to interact with their customers real time via beacons, GPS, or other high velocity volume mechanisms for collecting customer data, it is important to push data management and the analytical process higher into these transactional and streaming stacks. 
This will allow you to present the right offer at the right time to the correct customer. For example, many retailers have beacon devices that their customers use while they are in the store. By aligning their customer's location in the store to past purchases and internet browsing history, the retailer can now proactively present offers or reminders to the customer based on where they are in store. This will provide a more enhanced and relevant customer experience to your customer. And in addition, the retailer has the potential to increase their shopping cart and wallet share with the customer. We talked earlier today that marketers are hiring data engineers to reduce the time it takes to prepare data for marketing insights. Gardner reinforces this because according to Gardner, most organizations spend 80% of their time preparing and cleansing data for a business process. They also state that they expect that there will be five data engineers to every one data scientist. Organizations need a way to prepare and cleanse data in an automated and scalable way. The tools must be able to understand the global expansion of data and handling the complexity of the language needs of our global economy. A simple example is that in the United States, Dawn is a nickname but it, for Donald, but in Spain, Mexico, and Italy, it's an honorific. The solutions must be able to understand the data it is given as well as the information around the data, so it applies the correct process to the data in an automated and scalable way. In summary, if you have bad data going into your marketing process, you will get bad decisionings coming out. We talked about identity driving the success of customer experience and omnichannel the ability to match customer records together and build a single best view of customer identity is still important today as it was 20 years ago. Having the ability to build an identity customer record that has been vetted by both data and marketing teams will be a key enabler to a successful customer experience program. And as AI continues to influence the way companies do business, cognitive data quality becomes an increasingly important capability. The ability to suggest how data should be standardized, correct, and brought together based on past preferences will move the task of manually managing data into something that's more machine-based. By the way, the same machine learning and AI approaches that you're being used today in your analytical and marketing processes will be expanded into the data process. Goes without saying that as cyber crime continues to rise across the global, we'll see government agencies putting in place regulations to ensure the protection of its citizens' data and holding organizations accountable to maintain the production and the security of this sensitive information. For example, GDPR and the California privacy laws are just some simple examples. Successful organizations are incorporating data governance programs to help them manage and secure sensitive information residing inside of their organization. Data governance combined with an open repository that incorporates data lineage, metadata management, and impact analysis provide a superb visual way to understand the data journey across the data landscape, but is also useful for regulatory compliance and audits. Once again, as AI continues to grow in importance and matures inside of organizations, many companies will want to be able to leverage the power of machine learning and AI for sensitive data identification. This will provide more complete layers for personal data protection, which is augmented by machine learning that was based on past human interactions. This will be the future path many companies will choose for the identification and protection of sensitive information within their company. The last data management capability that is needed for customer experience is the ability to monitor the customer data health via a visualization tool. It is important to understand, is the quality of my customer data getting better over time, or has something happened to cause it to decay? By understanding the health of the data, you will ensure you have data that is fit for business purpose. This leads to trust 
in the data being used for decisioning and customer engagements. If the data is not meeting quality thresholds, your data process needs to be interrupted and someone needs a way to review and remediate that data prior to it infecting the rest of the process. Hence, workflows for bad data need to be established inside of the data process. Once the bad data condition has been resolved and addressed, the now healthy data can continue with its journey. Benefit that, that Kim, Sarah, and I all submit will be very difficult to achieve without a true partnership between data management, customer experience, and marketing. So this is an anonymous but real case study of a large bank that's implemented a next best offer project using relationship context data in combination with predictive analytics to deliver optimized product offers in real time across many channels, both digital and traditional. The initiative yielded significant benefit for this particular bank, generating 6 million leads annually, 80 to 100,000 new accounts per year, and marketing ROI in excess of 100% in the first few years. And here's how it works. Marketing groups generate individual targeted lead lists, which are submitted to a central optimization and decisioning engine. You can see that over on the right-hand side of the slide. The engine uses a combination of predictive analytics, machine learning, business rules, and predetermined business and channel constraints to develop a list of potential offers for each customer that are segmented and sequenced in priority order. So when the customer, we'll call him Jason, visits an included channel, for this example, he's using the bank's mobile app to get on the website. The channel contacts the optimization engine for a list of possible offers. Now you can see from the box on the bottom right hand side of the slide that the analytically generated and priority, prioritized offers include a home equity line of credit, a relationship review to move him to an account package that better fits his usage patterns, and a discounted car loan. On, on receiving the message, the optimization engine resequences these offer priorities based on business rules and channels. So the home equity line of credit was the highest priority, but it's not available on the mobile channel. So the relationship review is moved to the top of the list. The new offer is passed back to the requesting channel, the mobile app, and delivered to Jason who accepts. Now this is a win for Jason because he feels like the bank is actually looking out for him and for the bank who's actually been able to sell a higher tier product. So this example actually shows what happens when you take the next step and add real-time situational context to the mix. As we discussed in the data section, that situational context is what allows companies to determine intent. It helps to surface those moments of now that signal what a customer is doing at a particular time. In this example, um, while Jason's using the mobile app, he's actually at a car dealer shopping for a new car. And while the bank really has no way of knowing his exact location, situational context can tell them what he's doing on the website. He's searching for auto loan rates in order to compare the bank price against what the dealer is offering. Combining this information with the fact that he had recently paid off an existing car loan with the bank adds enough situational and relationship context to be able to resequence the offer priorities in a different way than what we saw in the prior example. Now a discounted auto lo loan rate is actually displayed at the very top rather than the relationship review that came without the situational context. So in this case, Jason is highly likely to accept the offer for the new auto loan product for the bank rather than financing through the dealer. And what's more, the bank still has the relationship review offer which has been specifically matched to Jason for later communications when the time is right. 